Buongiorno. the message last time. Well, I'll be keeping an eye on you, that's for sure. Hello? Excuse me. Hey, do I know you? Mr... Well, I believe we've met. We have. At that ghastly party. Oh, Evelyn Miller. Unfortunately so, Mr... Arthur Morgan, at least sometimes. Uh, can I say something rude? Sure. The mayor thinks you robbed him. Oh, to be clear, he, he wasn't very upset about it. He rather liked you. Okay. Do you, uh, well, I mean to say, uh, can you steal things? Is there a reason you're asking me to incriminate myself, Mr. Miller? Well, I'm sorry. Have you met? Uh, this is Rain's Fall, a great chief, and his son, Eagle Flies. Gentlemen. We saw you in the wagon train crossing the river at Cumberland Falls. And at the party, you were upstairs. You have great powers of observation. Yes, my people, if we are even a people anymore. We've fought hard. We've made peace treaties. And those treaties were broken. And we've been moved and punished and punished and moved. I'm sure. And now I am told we are to be moved again. Clearly, contravening the peace treaty signed three years ago. This will lead to war. No, my son, it will not. We cannot fight another war. They have got stronger, and we have become far weaker, Mr. Morgan. Well, it's a bad business. It's to do with oil. I know it is, but I need the proof. I believe there were some prospectors who were on their land a few months ago who have filed reports with Leviticus Cornwall and the state government claiming huge reserves of oil under their land. So, you want me to try and steal it? Obviously, they can't. <laughs> and even more obviously, I would be useless. <clears throat> Listen, I realize that it is a ridiculous request, but we're very desperate. Now, I'm not a do-gooder, Mr. Miller. Gentlemen, I'm very sorry for your predicament, but... I'm a working man. I got problems of my own. We will pay you very handsomely, Mr. Morgan. How much? I told you, they're all mercenaries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a price on my head in two states, my friend. The government doesn't like me any more than it does you. Like you, I've been running for as long as I can remember. And like you, my time here is nigh undone. We understand, and we will pay. Thank you. You meet my son in a couple of days near Citadel Rock, just west of the oil fields. Okay. We are very grateful for your help. Gentlemen, that appointment with the Senator. We should head over there. It's a waste of our time. And his. No. We must try everything. Come along. Hello. Mr. Miller, the counselor wants to apologize. He can see you now. We've been waiting I don't know how long. Or next month, if you'd like to reschedule. Come. Perhaps the senator won't mind waiting. You must be damn stupid if you think you could come back here.
Don't seem overly humane to me. I think it's mighty fine. Shit! Could I please get some assistance? Never seen anything like that. Oh, merda! One moment, please. This is hey. extremely delicate. There. Oh, wonderful. Algernon Wasp, purveyor of the exotic and the exquisite. Enchanté. Uh, Tacitus Kilgore. How can I help you? May I interest you in a uh, hat, perhaps? Yeah. How about a nymph? I import them from Brussels. The idiots in this town all want Italian nymphs, but the Italians make the coarsest of marble. I mean, quite frankly, the Baroque is an abomination. Belgium. Now that is a land for the connoisseur. Oh, yes. Yeah, as I always say. But, you know, I'm not really a nymph kind of man. No, oh, of course, too ephemeral. You want something, uh, more tangible, more gothic. I also make corsets. Would you like a corset? I always wear one. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I ride a lot of horses. Um, the whalebone might stick in. Mm, well, a cup of tea. Uh, sure. And what is it you do, Mr. Kilgore? Are you a gentleman of leisure? An aesthete? <gasps> an artist. Uh, I suppose I'm <clears throat> kind of an adventure. Ha! Huh. Yes, of course you are. Here, be careful with the china. Sir, it is French. Not Belgian? No, 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 no. 
They are Philistines in that area not to be trusted. Youth, eternally preserved in marble is more their specialty. I fear China will always elude them. Now, why are you here exactly? I don't know. You're an adventurer, a wanderer, a lost soul cast out from heaven? <sighs> sure. Well. I do pay exceptionally well for certain objects needed for my art. Mm, you do? I do. Exceptionally well. Well, what do you need? Let's see. Right now, I have a couple of commissions. I need at least 15 egret plumes. Good ones, obviously. I also need 15 assorted orchids. Here's a list. Okay. I will see what I can do. Thanks for the tea. Thank you, Tacitus. It'll be very worth your while. Have anything to spare for a blind man? Oh, <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, truly, thank you. It means a lot to me. Oh, good day to you. Do you have anything you can spare for a blind man? Futuristic attitude has passed, I hope. If you're buying or selling, fine, but you are not welcome to linger. Hmm, sure, I'll take a look. More? Sure, why not? with you.
I'll be tending to you shortly. Hello, how can I help? Nothing like a fresh start. Try biding the law. It ain't so bad. Thank you. Really. Move next time. What do you need? Wait there. I'm coming straight down. Arthur. Hello, Mary. You came. Sure. Whenever you call for me, I'll come. Oh, Arthur. What's wrong? Daddy. Your father? I'm a bigger fool than I even thought. I, I'm begging you, Arthur. I know Daddy was not kind to you, but, but surely you cannot hate a man for the sin of loving his daughter and wanting better for her than... Than, than me? Than the choices you what make. What choice did I have? Did I ever have? Oh, I know. You had to live by your code. But your code is... Well, it's not right. Has your way been right, Mary? With you? And Jamie joining a bunch of crazies? And hypocritical daddy with his drinking and whoring and gambling? Huh? Is that what a pure life has gotten you? Begging me for help? Oh, Arthur. Be kind to me. Please. I'm sorry. I am... I should have asked someone else, but... But I'm the best guy you know at frightening decent people. It wasn't that I didn't love you, Arthur. You know that. Mm. Oh, Arthur. We were so very young. Think how different life could have been. Yeah, I think about it. A lot. It, it all seems so long ago and far away now. Will you help me try to save Daddy? Come along, Dan. Where are we going? What's the old lovable patriarch been up to now? Oh, Arthur. You know sarcasm is beneath you. He's been gambling and drinking and other things. Oh, the filthy rotter. Where can we find him? He said he was going down to the Theodore Eckhart stables. Something about a horse. It's down by the water in the warehouse district near the train yard. Come on, then. 
Don't be a pompous ass, Arthur. It doesn't suit you. Oh, should I leave that to Daddy? Leave Daddy alone. He suffers enough. Well, I suppose I can take some consolation in that. Oh, Arthur. I should have ran away with you years ago. Well, you wouldn't. No, I didn't. But... Well... I don't know. So what do you think he's up to? I'm not sure. He keeps saying it's a disgrace a man of his standing has to ride around on some old nag. Standing? He's usually falling down. Arthur. He wasn't always this way. But it has got worse. He's drinking and gambling more than ever. Pawning things off left and right. Mixing with bad people. I'm just scared for him. Don't worry too much. Whatever it is, we'll work it out. What are you doing? This is the place. Let me go in and see what kind of a state he's in. Sure. I'll wait here. Good luck. Scream if you need any help. Very funny. You can't stand there. What, in the street? Yes, in the street. Is it your street? Just get out of here. Why? I said, just get out of here. Listen, partner. I'm waiting on the lady. She's a fine lady. She's just gone inside. If I wasn't waiting on this lady, you'd be dead already. But if you continue to irritate me, I'll kill you. I make my apologies to the lady. It's your call. Oh, I didn't mean nothing. Never been so demeaned in my life. Apology accepted. Oh, my own wait daughter. right there. I have half a mind to kill you myself. Daddy. No. Oh, Daddy, please come home. You're tired, Daddy. Tired and unwell. I have no unwell. such thing. You get away from me. You head home. I insist upon it. Leave me be. Damn nuisance. Excuse me, partner. Still as charming as ever, I see. Oh, Arthur, he's up to no good. We better follow him. Okay. This way. He went around the corner. Such a high opinion of himself. Wait, Arthur. Any closer and he'll spot us. We'll just follow the smell. Arthur, come on. He just went between those crates. Come here, huh. quick. Mind where you go. Mind where you go. Sorry? Do you think he saw us? I don't think so. What did you say to me? I didn't say a thing insulting. I'll wipe that goddamn smirk clean off your face. <laughs> Ain't you a little old for brawling, mister? Damn you! He's heading across the road. You know, this is kind of fun. Shh, he'll hear you. You could have cleaned yourself up a bit. I didn't realize I was here to impress anyone. He 
just went left down that alleyway. What's he doing? Let's go find out. Don't say I never show you a good time. I'm just glad you're here. Don't lose sight of him. What's he doing? What do you think he's doing? Well, he's either waiting for a woman of dubious morals, or he's trying to sell something. So, Ashton, you got the money? Seems he's selling something. Have you got the brooch, Mr. Gillis? Yes. Here. Here's the money. <laughs> mm, that is beautiful. It's a family heirloom. That was That's mother's brooch. Not any longer, Mr. Gillis. Enjoy the money. And should you need any more, I can offer you a loan at a very reasonable rate of interest. No, thank you. I've heard what happens to folks who take loans from you. It's not even his to sell. Oh, it's like just a brooch. At least he didn't get himself well, killed. You don't understand. Nice mother enough. left it to me. You, you sold my mother's brooch? How could you? You! That's theft! Oh, speaking of thieves, I, I see you found your outlaw again. Hello, sir. Have you been well? Daddy, how could you? Mary, wait here. I'll go get the brooch. Don't hurt anyone, Arthur. He'll probably kill someone. Oh, but you like that, don't you, Mary? I am ashamed of you, Daddy. You, Ashton! Hold her right there! Leave me alone. Leave me alone. It's just a brooch. I want that brooch. It wasn't Gillis's to sell. I bought it fair and square. How much do you want for it? I guess I could give it to you for a hundred dollars. A hundred? What do you take me for? Okay, okay. Uh, I'm a reasonable man. Let's say 50. Not good enough, Ashton. Okay, Jesus! 
Twenty-five dollars, that's my final offer. <laughs> Take the damn thing, you crazy son of a bitch. You don't know who you're messing with. Somebody's gonna pay for this. Father. I don't know. You want me to go find him again? Not really. I want to take a walk. I'll take you to the trolley. Thank you. Yeah, uh, got you your brooch back. I won't ask. Probably best not. Hey, what are you doing now, right this moment? Why'd you ask? <laughs> well, I was wondering if you wanted to do something. Uh, head to the theater, perhaps. Uh... Theater? Me? Sure, why not? <laughs> It'll be fun, Arthur. Let's go to the Relure. They have the strangest acts. <laughs> strangest I can handle. Well, it's the normal business of life. I can't seem to get a grip on it. <laughs> you and me both, Arthur. Oh, I've missed you. Don't start. <laughs> You're an idiot. But you'll always be my friend. Well, of course I'm your friend, but... <laughs> you ain't always fair with me. If I was fair with you and a good person, I'd have had you hanged a long time ago. Well... That's true. <laughs> so, shut up and act like a gentleman, or at least try to for once in your brainless life. You're not a very nice woman, Mrs. <laughs> Lamb. Well, look at the company I keep. I know, it's quite dreadful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of beautiful in a gaudy and tasteless way. It's the only way I know. <laughs> Thank you. Well, no, I didn't mean it like that. I... I'm sure. <clears throat> You silly man. Come on, let's go find our seats. How about here on the right? Sure. After you. the greatest assembler of entertainment since Nero himself. Do not doubt. As a child, when I walked the horse manure covered streets of Saint-Denis, I never dreamed of the stir I would create so, in this locality. Just as start a not. Are you of in the a rush, the greatest Arthur? show ever assembled. Prepare for the grandest excitement of your curiosity. Fire. Snakes and magic. I encourage any of you to dabble in all three if you have a settled aversion to manual labor as I do. For entertainment is a gift that will see you through the winter better than any packed larder or root cellar full of canned goods. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
please welcome a truly stunning musical performance to the stage, Miss Robin Koninsky! for joining us. Now let's talk a little bit about this place we all love called Saint Denis. Dulcet tones, right? Yes, she is pure spectacle, and I assure you, she can charm any beast, any beast at all, from cockroach to killer whale. <laughs> Your mother most likely told you not to play with fire or to spend time in the company of strange women. You are about to do both, <laughs> Miss Antoinette Sanservino. Stop it. Look at that. away from the curtain.
enchanting, mesmerizing. She is truly one to bring home to mother. It is said that there is a place in France where the naked ladies dance. I have been there. Prepare for the body braziers of the Petit Flaneur in Gay Paris! Oh, incredible! Aren't they lovely? Oh, those legs are a sight to behold. I am spent. <laughs> Each of my shows is truly incredulous. Awe-inspiring, and I'm sure you enjoyed. Thank you. <laughs> we flounder through the morass of humanity with only bright moments like these before it all goes dim and snuffs out in silence. So thank you. What a lovely evening. Come back tomorrow. All right. Well, shall we? Yes. That was fun, Arthur. <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh. All right. You better take me to the trolley now, Mr. Morgan. Of course. <laughs> Quite ridiculous, but somehow very amusing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> My life wasn't supposed to... Oh. 
Is it too late for us, Arthur? I can't lie to you. I want it, man, Mary. If I... If anyone close to me, well, they wanted to. And I can't have you wrapped up in there. But it's coming to an end. This time it really is. Run away with me, Arthur. Run away right now and don't look back. I want to. More than anything I want to. But I've got some people I need to take care of. Once they're free, then I'm free. Then I can disappear. But Arthur... If we're gonna run away anywhere, we'd need money. And soon, I'll have some. I know you won't run away. But it's a pretty dream. Very pretty. But I will. Once I get some money, and I had some, but then some fool got it trapped into a town that I can't go back to. It's another story. I'll write you. 